Hey guys, I am Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm Chris Irvin. And we are here to talk to you about ketones. So there are two main types of ketones that you can take as a supplement. So if you're running on a ketogenic diet, you don't have to just produce them from your body. You can also take some products that help boost the levels of ketones in your body. Yeah, an important thing to point out with that is that with exogenous ketones, you know, they're not meant to replace a ketogenic diet. They're more of meant to supplement a ketogenic diet. And when used strategically, they can have their own benefits. Right, which is why they're called supplements, right? Yes, exactly. Right, so there are two different kinds that can be a little confusing to parse through what they do and, and how effective they are. So number one would be beta-hydroxybutyrate, and then number two would be a ketone ester. So both are ketones, they're just produced in a little bit different way, have different action on the body. Yeah, so beta-hydroxybutyrate uh, ketones are going to be bound to a mineral um, like salt, calcium, uh, potassium, magnesium, and it's going to allow that to come in a powder form, which is gonna make it so you can just mix that in water and drink it as a supplement. Right, and, and ester is just to take the ketone and they go through what's called an esterification process and attach it to another molecule, that needs to be in a liquid form. And so there's a lot of different reasons why you would do one versus the other, and, and we'll get to that as we go along. And so the beta-hydroxybutyrate, as being in a powder, the application is just gonna be much easier. So number one, the application is that it tastes way better. So that there's a big taste difference between BHB or beta-hydroxybutyrate and a ketone ester. Yeah, and if you guys are, you know, if you've ever tried the two of them, uh, you'll know that uh, over the last couple of years, we've definitely improved the taste for both of these. A few years ago, both of them were not very good tasting supplements. Right. Um, but now, you know, esters still have a pretty harsh taste. If you're somebody who's trying to use them every day or use them like before a training session or something, they can be a little bit harder to stomach. Uh, the ketone salts tend to taste a little bit better. Yeah, the taste of the ketone esters is pretty brutal. Like I, I can usually chug anything down and to me it still gets me. Whereas beta hydroxybutyrate, the BHB, now I think it tastes pretty good. I mean, there's tons of brands, obviously we make ones so we're biased uh, on ours, but yeah. tons of brands have been able to make them taste really, really great. Yep. So you know, why the difference between the two. So one of the things that when you bind the ketone to a salt, your body has to then process that and you're basically inside your intestines, inside your body, we split that apart. And so the level of which it spikes your ketones is a little bit lower, but it lasts a lot longer. And so instead of a ketone ester where your body can just immediately metabolize that and use that for energy, it spikes your ketone levels way up. BHB or a powdered ketone it's a little bit longer, but not as high. And there's, there's benefits to each of these in certain use cases. Yeah, so obviously, you know, you can see that if, if you're going for something, some use of exogenous ketones where you're trying to have a little more prolonged increase in your ketone levels, you're probably gonna be considering more of a ketone salt. Whereas if there's a, a need for a huge spike in ketone levels, which we'll get into that a little bit later in the video, you may consider ketone esters. But one kind of interesting thing to point out uh, as an advantage, in my opinion, to ketone salts is that a lot of the minerals that these ketone salts are typically bound to are minerals that are often depleted on a ketogenic diet. So, you know, this is kind of a double whammy where you're, at, you're able to increase ketones in your blood as well as increase the minerals that you're trying to replenish on a keto diet. Yep. And so, like we talked about before, these are supplements. And the most important thing to highlight here, I think, is that neither ketone erases carbohydrates, neither ketone magically helps you burn fat. And so these aren't magic pills. I wish they would, that would be pretty awesome, but they're just not. Yeah, and I think that that's an important thing to highlight in general is, is the weight loss component to it. Obviously, if you're taking, um, if your body is producing ketones naturally, there's a fat burning component. We know that's how ketones are produced. When you're taking ketones as a supplement, that bypasses that whole system. So fat burning isn't happening in that same sense. Now, as we're also gonna talk a little bit later, there are some signaling mechanisms in which a ketogenic diet could possibly promote weight loss, but as a direct you know, th supplement to increase fat loss, not the best way that these should be considered. Right. So let's just go ahead and chat about each one, how you would use them. You know, I think there, there's great use cases for both of them, but it just depends per person. So we'll start with BHB or ketone salt. So the effective dose and how much you actually need to have an effect obviously depends per person. If you're a very small person with not a lot of ketone receptors, um, you're gonna need less. If you're a very large person with a lot of energy demands, you're gonna need a little bit more, but kind of somewhere between like seven, 15 grams-ish is where we like to recommend people. Yeah, and really if you're new to taking exogenous ketones in general, you're gonna wanna start with a lower dose and you know taper up as you can tolerate it. So it's not uncommon for both esters and salts to cause a little bit of GI distress if you've never taken it. So you'll wanna start with you know lower dose, maybe 
you know, half of what uh, Dr. Gustin is recommending here. And then as your body tolerates it, you can increase and see how much you need to get the benefit you're looking for. Good. And so that one of the reasons for this is that, especially when you're first transitioning to a ketogenic diet, your body literally can't use the ketones effectively. So you take a supplement, it takes some of it up, it can use a little bit of the actual active ingredient, but it says otherwise, we, we don't have anything to do with this, let's flush it out. So you can have some GI disruption with that. Also, sometimes due to the mineral load that your body is not used to, that can cause some GI irritation as well. So that brings us to the first main benefit of the BHB or ketone salt, which is transitioning to a ketogenic diet. So what happens a lot of the times when people start a ketogenic diet, they're eating a lot of carbohydrates, their body's running on glucose, the breakdown of carbohydrates, but then you take that fuel away. Your body then has to change a lot of machinery and literally build new transporters on your cells so that way you can start breaking down fat and then using it for energy with ketones. But what happens is that now you're not gonna have the ketones for fuel, you're not gonna have carbs for fuel. This is one of the reasons, you know, along with not having enough electrolytes, a few different things, why we have a low carb flu or a keto flu. And so taking exogenous ketones in this period can actually help speed it up and help you make some more of those transporters and provide you with an energy source while you're transitioning to being fat adapted. Yeah, and I think that this is probably one of my favorite uses of exogenous ketones is during this adaptation period. You know, we know that the body can transition pretty quickly to making ketones, um, but it's it takes a while before, like Dr. Gustin said, before you're producing them at a level where your body can efficiently use them. And, you know, these transporters that are on our cells that are required for ketones to be taken in and used for energy, like he said, they need to be upregulated. And one of the ways that research has shown that these could potentially be upregulated is through simply, you know, stimulating it with higher ketone levels. So, you know, during this period when you're starting a keto diet, while you might not be producing a ton of ketones, taking exogenous ketones to get those blood ketone levels elevated may help with this process. Right, and while you're becoming fat adapted to the first maybe four, six, eight weeks, you may have a lot of weird hunger cravings, things like that. First tip there is just to eat real food and make yeah. sure you're getting a lot of micronutrients. But another tip there is using exogenous ketones when you have a hunger craving, because your body might still be craving carbohydrates more than it's craving an actual energy source. So then if you supply it with an exogenous ketone, in this case, again, you don't need to blast it with, a, with, a, with an ester, a a exogenous ketone in a form of beta hydroxybutyrate salt is gonna be way easier than to just kind of blunt hunger cravings. Yeah, and it's gonna be a lot easier to just incorporate that into your lifestyle more simply. Just having you know a packet of a powder with you, you can easily mix into a drink. Uh, you know, Ketones have a very unique ability to signal for a lot of things, and one of the things that they can signal for is that you have plenty of energy available in the body and that you don't need to stimulate appetite or hunger. So for a lot of people, you know, maybe you're trying to extend your fasting, but hunger is, you know, kind of help, is, is holding you back from fasting longer. Using exogenous ketones during this time can be a great way to push through that. You know, or maybe you're trying to, you know, not consume a lot of snacks in between meals, but this is still a new concept to you. You have that hunger during that time. Another great time to use exogenous ketones. Yeah. My favorite use case of the BHB salt is for mental capacity. So yeah. even if I'm eating a full ketogenic diet and I have, you know, a reasonable amount of ketones floating around my blood. If I jack it up a little bit with some BHB or some exogenous ketones, I am on fire mentally for at least four to six hours. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you experience the same thing, but that, that's why I use the ketones personally. Yeah, and that, that's, uh, that's my personal favorite use for using them is that, and, you know, there's a lot of times where you could use that extra cognitive boost. And, you know, if you are keto adapted, your body is very efficient at utilizing ketones. So, you know, taking more in through your diet and increasing your blood ketone levels is all that is, is really increasing the fuel availability to your brain. So, you know, that's obviously gonna lead to a lot of things like mental clarity, improved focus, um, just better cognitive function all around. So I think that's one of the, the best uses for these supplements. Okay. Another way you can use exogenous ketones is for physical output. So we'll get to the use case of, you know, if you're an intense extreme endurance athlete, you're probably gonna wanna use esters, but kind of for your day-to-day -day person who's doing some strength training, some other stuff, some, you know, light cardio, things like that. Having again, exogenous ketones in your bloodstream is gonna help with fuel partitioning. So you're gonna, like, it, it takes a little while for your fat to break down to be used as ketones. And so raising the bar a little bit and having more ketones in your blood is great for somebody who's just doing general activity throughout the day. Yeah, and for both of those last two, for both, both physical and mental performance, you know, caffeine is something that a lot of people wanna use to achieve those things. If they need a boost for better work output, mm -hmm. they, they turn to caffeine. Pre-workouts that a lot of people take are usually just loaded with caffeine. So exogenous ketones can be a great way to replace your need for caffeine. And you know that can extend a lot further past just before a workout or before a period where you need better cognitive output. You know, For me, one of my favorite times to take it is like after three o'clock when 
I may still need some energy, but I don't want to have that caffeine that late in the day. So that's one of another great time to use these is just to replace coffee. Yeah, and then the difference between that is that caffeine is a stimulant that messes with your neurotransmitters, whereas beta hydroxybutyrate is actually a, an energy source that your body can use for producing energy. So it's a very, very different mechanism there. Um, another question that we get all the time is, okay, let's say I want to take it for transitioning, for workout, for mental performance. You know, when do I take it? Does it matter? Do I take it with food or without food? And I think the answer is like kind of whenever. Mm -hmm. So think about this. If, if you're just taking it by itself, that's all the body has to deal with and that's all the body absorbs and uses as a fuel. So they're going to be a little bit more effective, but you're also going to burn through them a little bit more. Yeah. And I think, you know, as a general rule of thumb, what I'll tell people when they ask the best time to take it is any time where there's an increased demand for fuel, which is pretty generalized, but, but you know, you can break that down into whether it's your brain needs more fuel, your body needs more fuel. Whenever there's a demand for that, that's a great time to use exogenous ketones. Yep. And then one last thing about the powder, the BHB salts, there's a lot of confusion as well that we'll just touch on uh, briefly, but the difference between a D and an L form of the ketone. So your body uses a, a form of ketone. Think about uh, any type of compound of, of a molecule, kind of think about like as gloves. So your body produces one that looks like this, and then it can flip and look the other way, which is um, a, an isomer that, you know, some people confuse it and say, okay, if we have both of those in your body at the same time, is, it your, is your body need to actually have that? Well, we've done research now that shows the L form or the non-native form is actually a potent signaling molecule that stays around your body and does a lot of things as reducing inflammation, potentially anti-aging, and a lot of other awesome things. Yeah, and I think another point to another controversial topic that we can touch on extending past that is a lot of people question, you know, if I take exogenous ketones, is that going to blunt my body's natural production of ketones? I think that's something we get that question all yeah. the time. And I think, uh, you know, the problem is that the answer to that is that acutely they, they will, they can potentially blunt that because just like the ketones that are produced in your body naturally, when your ketones get to a certain level that your body doesn't need to produce anymore, it's going to stop producing those ketones. But as the demand for ketones starts to increase again, i.e. when, you know, those ketone levels start to drop, your body will start producing again. So it's no different than, you know, when your, when your blood levels of ketones get elevated on a ketogenic diet, your body's going to, uh, you know, short term going to shut down ketone production until it needs to do it again. Same thing's going to happen with exogenous ketones, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Right. And so I'd say for most people, a BHB salt is going to be the best thing. You know, it's tastier, it's easier to absorb, um, it's a longer lasting thing and you can use it for a little bit more things, but a ketone ester is still super useful. So an ester, when we're looking at that, is again in a liquid form. And instead of, you know, gram amounts, it's in a, in a powder, it's not in a powder, it's in a liquid, it's about, you know, 60 to 75 milliliters. So you're looking at maybe like a, a thing this big that you just drink down. And again, they do not taste very, very good. Pretty rough. But there are some use cases for them. So the ketones, the esters, when you drink them, instead of having a nice level amount of ketones in your bloodstream, it really spikes it up. So instead of going from maybe like 1.0, 1.5 millimolar to maybe two or three, with a ketone salt, you're gonna go up to you know six, maybe seven, and really jack that up, but then it's gonna fall off way quicker. So why would you want that? There's two different ways. So the first one is, if you're doing a lot of extreme um, therapy with a ketogenic diet, so if you're treating cancer, doing things with epilepsy, seizure control, stuff like that, you may wanna use esters as far as the treatment goes. Yeah, and I think another use uh, where esters could be particularly beneficial would be like traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that after a traumatic brain injury, you really want to limit the glucose that's available to the brain. And you know, taking a ketone, and you want to increase the ketones available, and taking a ketone ester you know, right after a concussion or any head trauma can lead to a massive increase in ketones and also really drive your blood glucose in the ground. So you know, I think that in the case of traumatic brain injury, establishing a good ketogenic diet and using exogenous ketones up until competition where you might experience head trauma, I think is, is the best case, but post head trauma, an ester may be the best use. Yep, great point. So a lot of different use cases for a therapeutic advantage. I think esters actually come out on top. Um, also for extreme endurance athletes, so people who are running crazy long races who have a very specific fueling strategy might wanna use um, ketone esters here to be readily available and really spike things up. But you have to be careful here. So I wouldn't say just if you're out running around outside, that you should be taking esters because what happens is when your ketone levels go that high, 
it can really push your glucose really, really, really low. And so if you're an extreme endurance athlete, this might be really good if you have your feeling strategies down and you're still consuming some glucose. But for the average person, this is going to be kind of overkill. You're going to have to you know, fuel with both things and, and worry about timing and grams. And it can cause a lot of GI distress if you don't have it really dialed in. But huge advantage for those people who maybe are professional athletes in an endurance capacity. Yeah, and I think that brings up a great point that neither of these, but especially esters, are something that you'd want to use in competition space without first trying them. Test it out. Yeah, you're going to want to see how your body reacts. Uh, you're going to want to you know, know exactly how are you going to have GI distress. What is the amount that's actually going to provide benefit for you as opposed to hindering your performance. So those are all things that you want to test. But I think generally speaking, when, when we're talking about that, we're speaking about very high level athletes and that doesn't really apply to you or I or a lot of the general population out there that are just playing, you know, playing sports and, and working out and stuff like that. So um, it's definitely more of a use case for those extreme athletes. Right. And just to be clear about the differences between ketone levels going high or not as high, the level of your ketones doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it's at 2.0 versus 6.0, I mean, again, only in these kind of fringe use cases is that is that really an apparent thing? Yeah, it's, you know, and that's kind of why we bring up the therapeutic side of things too. You know, we research hasn't said that higher ketone levels are better, but there is some speculation that under certain therapeutic uh, cases that it could potentially be mm -hmm. better. So that would be a reason to consider them for these specific cases. But for general everyday use and for the general population, the ketone salts are probably your best option. Right. So esters, if you want to do really extreme endurance activities, or if you're treating any sort of condition and work with your doctor to do that, just don't go do it on your own. Uh, and then more of the ketone salts, the BHB, if you're looking to transition into keto, if you're looking to kind of squash hunger cravings, getting a mental performance uh, boost and having some signaling effects. And so I guess the next question is, where do you find these things, right? Well, right. so obviously <laughs> we're biased. So we like uh, the ones we make, so with Perfect Keto, but truthfully, I mean, there's a lot of different brands out there. Um, so whatever you like, try a bunch of them and see what works for you. Um, there's a company called HVMN or Human that does ketone esters. Again, a great product. Um, the difference between these two from a price standpoint is, can be pretty drastic, which kind of pushes people to the opposite end. So any kind of sort of exogenous ketone, like ours or other companies, are anywhere between the range of you know, 3 to $4 a serving, where esters can be upwards of 30 to $40 a serving, which is pr pretty huge, huge difference. Like I, I, I can't afford yeah. that every day. Um, but yeah, those are the differences. So any exogenous ketone you can get on, you know, on Amazon. I think that HVMN is link, also will link to that on Amazon below. Um, and, and try them out and see what works for you. Yeah, and I think another thing to consider when you're looking at exogenous ketone supplements uh, with the salts in particular is that we're seeing a lot more demand and a lot more popularity of these supplements. So there's a lot more lower quality products yeah. coming out on the market. Um, starting to see a lot more, you know, very low dosed five grams, uh, sometimes doses or, you know, capsule forms that are one or two grams of BHB. You'd have to take a massive amount of those capsules to actually provide a benefit. So don't fall victim to you know a lot of these other companies jumping on the bandwagon and producing ketones just because it's a hot market. Good point. And just you know we're not the only brand who does this, but one of our standards is that we don't put any weird fillers or ingredients in there. So just check your label and make sure whatever ketones you get, they don't add a lot of you know artificial flavors, flow agents, artificial sweeteners. That stuff is just going to do more harm than it's going to do good. Yep. Agreed. So if you guys have any questions on how exogenous ketones may impact you, if you should be using esters or BHB powder or any of these sorts of things, just pop them in the comments below. Um, you can reach out on Instagram and, and ask us questions individually. So I'm at Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm at The Ketologist. And we will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.